Welcome to you all this morning on this 20th uh, Sunday after Trinity and a particular welcome to Aubrey Church who are joining us today. So welcome to you all and I hope you've all been able to download uh, the order of service which is on the link um, below. So let us take a moment as we come into God's presence and we begin. In a world that cries out, fear me, we will listen to Jesus' words, don't be afraid. In a world that wants us to hate the other, we will live Jesus' call to love God, love your neighbour as you love yourself. In a world that radicalises, we too will be radical. Radical with our hospitality, radical with our hope, radical with our love. Then come, ready to be who we are called to be. Let us gather together and worship God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray in silence with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And as we gather to worship, whether in Shear or Gomshall or Peaslake or Albury or Farley Green or anywhere else in the world, we realise that we have not always been all that we might be and all that God would wish us to be. And so we come to a time of confession. And we say together, Almighty God, we confess that we have taken your commandments and turned them into rules. We have criticised those who have fallen short and selfishly proclaimed ourselves righteous. We have failed to understand the spirit of the commandments and the way that was shown by you to live, loving God and loving our neighbour. Forgive us for turning your law into burdens for others and ourselves. Instead of a way to love and freedom to you, in the name of Christ, who has given us the way and leads us on, we pray. Amen. You are loved. Love is the way. When you love God, you love others. When you truly lay your life down for others, you lay down your life for God. Give yourself to God by serving others. Know that God, in God's love, there is forgiveness, healing and reconciliation. Amen. And we now join with the choir who will be leading us in Immortal Invisible, God Only Wise.
And now we go over to Elizabeth Viney in Aubrey, who will be bringing us the reading, and then over to Tim, who will be preaching to us on the greatest commandment. This reading is from Matthew 22 and verse 34 to 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had sent the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Elizabeth. The phrase armchair sportsman is a derogatory one. It means somebody who just watches their sport on the television, doesn't play any sport, doesn't even actively go out and support their local team. The phrase can be used for other walks of life as well, an armchair politician, an armchair critic, and it's been used for Christians as well. The theologian Soren Kierkegaard described some of his colleagues who uh, were great at debating and arguing about Christianity, uh, but who didn't live it out in their lives as having an armchair attitude to life. In our reading today, Jesus is asked a question by the Pharisees. What is the greatest commandment? Unusually, he gives them a direct answer. Often he'd reply with a question or a, a clever half answer, but this time he tells them, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength, and love your neighbour as you love yourself. On these two commandments are based all the law and the prophets. Even more unusually, he again then goes on to ask them a question, but not as a follow-up or some kind of riposte, but, but on a completely different topic. Who is the Messiah to David? They answer, um, the Messiah is the son of David. And Jesus says, well, um, but David says that he will call the Messiah Lord. How can that be if he is his son? They begin to realise that there is, <laughs> there is much more going on in this question than simple scriptural semantics, uh, and they are silenced. And indeed, they ask no more questions. Jesus, of course, is making them think about what the Messiah means to them, not just as an academic, clever, legal point, but actually as something deeper and personal. He's trying to push them in the direction of true faith, active, lived out faith. Um, it doesn't work. And in chapter 23, Jesus goes on uh, to launch a blistering attack on the Pharisees. And amongst the many things he says about them, he says that they do not practice what they teach. Effectively, he's accusing them of being armchair Jews, uh, knowing the law, but not living out the heart and the spirit of it. In uh, our service last week, uh, we were talking about um, intentional faith, uh, living out our faith uh, actively and intentionally. Um, and I compared it to uh, the relationship in a marriage uh, and how in the early days of a marriage, uh, the things that we need to do to keep a marriage strong um, just happen naturally. But that as the years and the decades go by, we often have to be more intentional. We need to plan to do the things that are necessary to keep a marriage strong. And how our relationship with God is often the same. 
Uh, it's no good just assuming that because you're a Christian, uh, you will have a good relationship with God. For some people, it does work like that. Uh, but for many of us, we need to set time aside to have a deliberate attitude that involves looking for God, expecting God to turn up, and setting times aside to do that. When it comes to loving God, um, there is a comparison with a marriage again. In the marriage ceremony, we promise to love our partner. But if you think about it, that kind of love cannot be an emotional or romantic love because you can't promise that. You can't promise a feeling. Your feelings are beyond your control. But what you can promise is to try to behave in a certain way. So logically, that must be what you are promising. You're promising love in action. And that's the kind of love that we're talking about in response to God and to our neighbour, love in action. It's not just about having lovely spiritual uh, feelings about God, although that's a, that's a good thing, and it's certainly not about having lovely feelings about your neighbour. Um, in fact, it's about loving your neighbour even when you don't really like them very much. Being kind, being patient, um, as the description of love in 1 Corinthians 13 says, uh, not speaking bitterly or harshly, bearing no grudges, all those things towards God and towards neighbour, living our lives out in a loving way. And to be clear, uh, when Jesus accusing, accuses the Pharisees of not practising what they teach, he's talking about active love not as a sign of love, but actually as love itself. Love in action is love. Doing those things is the love that Jesus is talking about. The good news is that from a Christian perspective, you can actually do some of those things from your armchair. Ways that we love God are by talking to him. Prayer, two-way prayer. Is, is love in action, not just feelings, but it's, it's something we actually do. Reading our Bibles, uh, just reading them to study or to learn more, uh, or to teach ourselves, but also, as Mike was talking about last week, reading our Bibles to meet with God. That's, that, that's an action, that's a doing thing that we can do from our armchairs. And in fact, when Sarah talked about prayer last week, she did it from her favorite prayer armchair. Yes, we can pray at any time in any place, but actually for a good relationship with God, it's important that there are times when we take ourselves away, that we put ourselves in a reflective space, that we set time aside uh, to do that. Love in action, an armchair is a good place to do those things. But it's not enough in itself. Kierkegaard talked about an armchair attitude. He didn't say that you couldn't do Christianity from your armchair, but your attitude must be that full Christianity involves going out into the world, living our faith out there, loving our neighbour in practice there too. To go back to the sporting analogy, going to church is an important part of our faith. It's an important uh, way of living our faith out, and it's an important way uh, of loving God. By going to church, we are simply going to church is an act of love for God, especially if we're doing it out of love, especially if we're doing it to try and meet with God. But again, it's not enough in itself. From a sporting perspective, going to church is not the game. Going to church is more like the pep talk in the changing room before the game begins. It's the way that we meet together as a team. It's the way that we strengthen ourselves. It's the way we build up our relationship with each other and with God. But then we go out onto the pitch to play the game, to love God and to love our neighbour in our homes, in our armchairs, but in our communities and in our streets and in the world as well. Amen. Thank you, Tim. And now we affirm our faith together in the words of this creed. Our God has created an abundant universe, giving life to all and graciously preserving all. We believe and trust in God. 
our Saviour has made a way to abundant life, giving his life for all and compassionately inviting all to share in his kingdom. We believe and trust in God. Our Comforter is poured out as the abundant Spirit, bringing power and gifts to all and leading all to fullness of life. We believe and trust in God, three in one, generous and loving, faithful and eternal. Amen. And now we go over to Mike in Peace Lake, who will be leading us in our prayers of intercession. Recently, in a diocesan COVID briefing paper, no less, I came across a quotation attributed to Augustine of Hippo, the theologian and bishop of the 5th century. And it was this. The one who sings prays twice. And so taking up that thought, our intercessions today, primarily for ourselves, are based upon the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. In deeper reverence praise. Merciful Father, Together we have come before you in worship, to acknowledge our fallen humanity, to confess our sins and to commit ourselves to you once again. In simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord, let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. Lord Jesus Christ, we come as those who have tried to follow you in the past, but so often failed, preoccupied by our preferences or prejudices, stumbling in our sin or senselessness. We've neglected the paths you have set before us. Come to us now and illumine our calling. As the Gospel of Matthew has recorded, we pray. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, Where Jesus knelt to share with thee The silence of eternity, Interpreted by love, Interpreted by love. Gentle Holy Spirit, you promise us peace and holy rest. But so often we choose to fill our lives with noise and confusion. Forgive us and grant us those sacred, timeless moments of prayer and devotion. Let us find time for you. With that deep hush subduing all, our words and works that drown the tender whisper of thy call. As noiseless let thy blessing fall, as fell thy manner down, as fell thy manner down. Loving God, you have always provided for your people, yet still we trust in our own strength and walk in our own ways, as you forgive us. Help us to learn a reliance on you, a trusting faith and an obedient heart. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace, the beauty of thy peace. Come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
Renew our lives with your peace. Restore us in your image. Revive us with your love. Guard closely the lonely, the sick and the dispirited. And touch them with your deeper wholeness and peace. We hold them in our hearts before you now. We also hold before you, good Lord, those who have recently died, remembering Arthur Chapman and Philip Parker, and others known to us. May they know your peace and welcome into the heavenly kingdom. We pray for their families and all who mourn, that your presence with them will be known and acknowledged. Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be done, let flesh retire. Break through the earthquake, wind and fire. O still, small voice of calm. O still, small voice of calm. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer with the collect for this day. God, our light and our salvation, illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living and looking on your beauty may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together the prayer which Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as we draw the theme of this service together, we join once again with the choir to sing a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another.
thank you to the choir once again uh, for leading us in song. And also we're really grateful that we've had Aubrey Church with us. Thank you for joining us and joining in with the service and helping lead. So thank you to Elizabeth too um, as well. And as we uh, draw to a close, um, we remember that this is the season of remembering as we come up towards All Souls. And next Sunday at 10 o'clock, our service will be, and our online service will be a service of remembrance for All Souls. So don't forget that you have a few more days in which if you have someone you have lost that you would like to be remembered and their name read in that service, do contact Rosemary Mason. And something else we're doing this year during this season of remembering is we're encouraging everybody to, if there's somebody they would like remembered, to take a stone to one of the churchyards, either St Mark's or uh, St James, and there you will find a cross shape on uh, in the churchyard. And if you want to decorate the stone, do decorate the stone or just put the name of your loved one or just simply take a stone so that it's known to you and put that within the cross. And we are using that as a way of remembering those we have loved and lost this year. And that will be from next Saturday um, morning. Also, uh, our services that are going to be live are going to be moved to nine o'clock from next Sunday. So our service live will be at nine o'clock for All Saints uh, next Sunday morning. And once again, if you would like to know and be keep up to date with what's happening in the parish, there is the weekly spir spirituality mailing. And again, contact uh, our rector, Tim Heaney, for that. So let us pray the blessing. Go out from here as workers in God's upside down kingdom, where the, first, the last are first and the first are last, where needs are met in miraculous ways and there is grace enough for all. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit surround you and sustain you in the coming days. Amen. Amen. And God be with you until we meet again.